Uh, hey, uh, my name is Mikey T. Williams, and I'm going to be doing like a 120 or so day trip through Central Asia. Um, I know most of the people watching right now are just uh, my friends, so I'm going to I'm going to talk as though that's not the case because hopefully this channel gets a little bit more popular. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm from Flagstaff, Arizona, and uh, I'll be doing a three to four to five hour indefinite trip through Central Asia. I'm not really exactly sure. Um, I might have a little picture here to show you exactly uh, the route that I'll be taking, but basically I'll be going through um, Georgia to Azerbaijan. Um, unfortunately, it's too difficult right now to go through Iran, but I'm going to uh, take a freight ship over the Caspian Sea, uh, get into Turkmenistan, uh, cycle through Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, and then Kazakhstan. So it should be about like three or 4,000 miles. Not really sure. I'll just find out when I'm there. Um, I don't know, if, if all goes well, um, I might continue into Russia if I still have like the time and money and energy. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching my channel. Uh, I recommend not watching my old videos from my Europe cycling trip because they're pretty awful. Uh, I'm gonna do everything now on like GoPros and with a nice mic and uh, I'm gonna try to not cuss as much so I don't take off my mom. Uh, but yeah, so basically uh, what I wanted this episode to be about was um, just talking about like how I'm actually financially able to do this trip and what I had to do in order to um, do a 120 day bicycle tour through Central Asia because um, it, it sounds out of reach I feel like to most people but in all reality it's um, it's very doable I'm just a regular guy with uh, regular incomes and uh, I've just learned to make it work but yeah so I'm basically making this video to um, give you an idea of what I've done in order to uh, be able to afford to do this uh, four month trip and also like purchase all the gear and everything because it's definitely not cheap but I, I want to show people that it is very doable for sure and hopefully this will inspire more people to do the same thing um, I definitely think bicycle touring is probably the best way to see countries because you're not just going from capital city to capital city um, you're going through little villages, you're seeing more of the scenery, and you're taking everything a lot slower, and you really take it all in and see the true side of the country as opposed to just um, going to big cities and seeing some of the natural wonders, but nothing really in between. I also want to preface by saying too that I, I fully understand that not everybody would be in the same position of, as me um, as far as just being a single guy and um, not really having many ties. Um, I understand that some people may buy in a house or have a kid or some other kind of dependent um, or not have a job that allows you to have more than two weeks off a year, which I totally get. Um, I'm not going to come out here and say you should leave everything, like put your kid up for adoption and uh, go sell your house and go travel. Um, people definitely do that, but I, it's definitely not realistic for the majority of people and I, I totally get it. Uh, I just want to let you know kind of how I've done it myself and maybe that will give you an idea of how um, you could do it yourself. And yeah, if you happen to make like a ton of money and you have a job that allows you to take multiple months off a year, um, that's super sick. And uh, I don't know how helpful this video would be for you because it sounds like you already got it figured out. Um, but I'm, I'm here to show you how just like a normal person with normal jobs um, can afford to do multi-month trips. And uh, yeah, you'll see how I made like certain life decisions and I've been living really simply and uh, just working a ton to be able to do this. Some of the things that I do may or may not appeal to you, just kind of, um, yeah, take this information and uh, apply it however you feel fit um, or not, or, or don't do it. Yeah, so firstly, uh, I've, I've been working a few jobs. My main squeeze is um, I'm a multi-day backpacking tour guide in the canyon and I also do day hikes and day tours for people as well. That's about half my income, that job there. Um, this job is seasonal. That's kind of the key thing is my main job is a seasonal job. Not many jobs are like that. Uh, I definitely will see myself only working seasonal jobs. The trade-off is you don't make money half the year, so you really have to budget yourself. And uh, my other job is that I work as a independent contractor, basically a handyman at this heart clinic. So I'll do like landscaping or painting or assembling furniture, or, uh, building shelving units or anything like that. Yeah, it's independently contracted. So, I mean, that, that job is 20 bucks an hour, which is phenomenal. Uh, the thing is it's maximum 10 hours a week um, and you gotta pay a boatload of taxes at the end of the year. So it's got, that one's kind of a placeholder to fill in the blanks for my other scheduled jobs. So my third job entails 
uh, building electric motors and the little processing units at an electric motor factory here in Flagstaff. It's kind of soul sucking, uh, but it's cool because it's it's one of the few jobs I've had in my life that's not customer service. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a minimum wage job, um, and it kind of feels like a minimum wage job. Uh, but it, it is a really great break from that customer service aspect. Uh, but basically, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm doing kind of monkey work. And um, my fourth job, number four, is that I am a dishwasher at a restaurant called Bricks here in Flagstaff. Um, I've told myself like four different times in my life I'd never be a fucking dishwasher again. Um, and I keep ending up washing dishes. My desire to go on this trip is way greater than um, my pride or ego that would have prevented me from wanting to be a dishwasher with a college degree at 28 years old. Um, it's, yeah. Four times I've, I've, I've said I wouldn't become a dishwasher and then like here I go washing dishes again. I think it's gonna forever uh, haunt me in my entire life. So I'm, I'm working these four jobs, half of which are minimum wage. Uh, the other ones are seasonal. Um, so on top of that, I also live pretty simply. Uh, I drive a $500 vehicle that wasn't quite running at the time. My ex helped me get it going. And throughout the past like year and a half, I've learned how to fix a lot of it on my own. I got a lot of help from YouTube for sure. So I've been saving a lot of money on that. I just have pure liability insurance. It's like 80 bucks a month because um, car, it's a $500 car. And I moved into a converted laundry room. All right, so I'm gonna show you my room. Uh, this is my house. Uh, it's pretty small. Hi, Kayla. Hi. Uh, it's five by 10. So it's, yeah, 50 square feet. As you can see, three walls of the room touch my bed. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a seven minute walking distance to downtown and like five minutes from the woods. So it's a pretty sweet deal. It's 250 a month. So. I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, the stuff that I do have, I'm gonna be um, putting in a storage unit. It's for like 60 bucks a month. Um, but yeah, a, a small room definitely isn't for everybody, but uh, for me it works pretty dang well. I've already have uh, my bicycle from my previous trip in Europe and my pannier bags and everything like that. Slowly throughout these past few years, every other paycheck I would just go ahead and um, buy a new piece of equipment for my trip and then eventually I've accumulated pretty much everything I need. Bought my plane ticket like six months in advance. I just got a one-way ticket. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I have enough money um, for when I do need to get back to the States. I can buy a plane ticket a month in advance and then uh, still have money to uh, eat and not die back in the States. Lastly, the, the people think that traveling has to be really costly. Honestly, your, your biggest expense if you're bicycle touring, it's most likely going to be your plane ticket. Um, if you're doing bicycle touring in the way that I am, you're camping a lot of the time, you're cooking your own food, you're not spending any money on transportation, you're buying food really cheap at the markets, um, you're staying at hostels when you can't. I mean, my, my hostel in Georgia for a week is 30 bucks, $30 for like full five days. I think that makes me reconsider my $30 bar tab. Like, was that couple hours at that bar really worth sacrificing an extra five days? in a capital city in Georgia. You're staying uh, at these cheap hostels or you're um, on warm showers, which is basically the bicycle tourist version of cow surfing. Um, and then every now and then you, you would get a hotel just so you can have a full day of rest and wash your clothes in the sink and stuff like that. But for the majority of the time, you're, if you do it right, you're not spending much money. And I've honestly found that the less money you spend when you travel, the more of a cultural experience you have and the more um, you're kind of pushed to have to interact with people when you're looking for directions or water or food or anything like that. So um, I definitely think it's like the purest form of traveling and we'll see how this trip goes and hopefully I don't die. If not, uh, my next video will be of me arriving in Georgia, starting my trip. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I know this is mostly just my friends watching right now, but um, just stay posted. I'm gonna fly out April 1st, April Fool's Day. Uh, is when I go out, so I'll upload my big video, maybe the, the day after that. I hope this uh, video blog won't suck. It's going to be way better than that other stuff that I did in Europe. I'm going to try a lot harder to make actually decent quality um, footage for this trip, especially because it's going to be pretty dang scenic. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. See ya.